Okay, so we are now continuing with differential equations, but we're now looking at linear, linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients. Okay. Okay, so a linear homogeneous differential equation has the form, of course, this form, sum of things, okay, a linear combination of things, where the, where the things are derivatives of y, zeroth derivative, first derivative, all the way to the nth derivative, there's all the n, and the scalars are functions of x, so not just real numbers, but actually functions of real numbers, functions of x, okay, multiplying those things. Then it's set, equal, and that whole thing is, it must be set equal to zero, because it's homogeneous. Now, if the functions a, k of x are constants, then we, instead, so not just, not just any old function, but just constants, functions, so you can think of them as constant functions, you can think of them as just numbers now, then we say this is a differential equation with constant coefficients. And these types of differential equations can be easily solved, and the solutions all involve exponentials. Okay, so now we're going to see how to solve such equations. So in other words, it's going to be an equation with constant coefficients, so instead of a n of x, we just write maybe a n. Okay? Uh, all the way down to a n minus 1, all the way down to a 1, a naught. Okay. Every linear constant coefficient differential equation has an associated auxiliary polynomial. Okay, not to be confused with a characteristic polynomial. We haven't done that yet in this book. Never mind. Okay, it has an auxiliary polynomial. There are two ways to calculate this polynomial. One way is you can substitute y equals e to the lambda x into the equation, okay? So, for example, here's the equation. Substitution gives you, so you substitute e to the lambda x into it, and then, well, the second derivative of e to the lambda, well, the first derivative, so you have e to the lambda x, I'm sorry, two. First derivative of e to the lambda x is lambda times e to the lambda x. Second derivative is lambda squared e to the lambda x. So you sub those in, okay? Then you factorize out the exponential, or you divide through by the exponential, on both sides. You can because the exponential is never going to be zero. And you get lambda squared minus three lambda plus two. That's the characteristic one. That's the auxiliary polynomial. Another way is to rewrite the differential equation using D for the derivative. Okay, so the, we've seen a bunch of notations. You know, you might not know this notation of der for derivative yet. So you know that one way of writing the derivative of y is the derivative of y in terms of x. Another way is to write y dash, right? Um, and what other ways are there? I can't think of another way right now, but this new way is you write like big D y. That means derivative of y. Okay. So that D, that big D is not a constant, it's not a real number, it's not a variable. It's a sign meaning give me the derivative of the next thing. It's just, so like you can basically say that D is the same thing as D D X or what that D doesn't the D doesn't tell you what variable what variable you're, you're differentiating in terms of but sorry that's just the cat food ignore it okay uh, and in general these notations then can also be used for the nth derivatives of things so he, he, you know you'd say the nth derivative of y in terms of x you'd say you know, you'd either write n dashes down, or that's too many dashes, write down, you write that. And here you'd write d to the n, y. Now, that doesn't, doesn't really mean d raised to the power n. It means d done n times. I mean, of course, because you do, d, you do derivative once, then you take the derivative of that, you're going to get d, d. And that kind of looks like d squared y, right? You carry on doing it n times, you get d, n, y. Okay, so this is this new and notation of the derivative, which is probably my favorite notation of the derivative. Okay, this D thing. Okay. Anyway, we're using it to get the auxiliary polynomial. So you rewrite the differential equation using D for the derivative. So, um, so now they're doing this on the general example. So this thing, now you replace all the, you replace every D dx with a D, with a big D, right? So you have this. 
Uh, let me just do it on this. Is there an example? Yes, there you got an example. Okay. Okay. Then you can think of base. So this, hmm, this is really a sort of complicated way of saying it. But now you have this whole thing. And now you can factorize out the y in effect. So you have this whole thing operating on this y. So what this means now is not this thing times by y. It means this thing operating on the y. In the same way that d dx y doesn't mean d dx times y. It means d dx. It means do the d dx to y. It means differentiate y. And in the same way in which you could, if you wanted to, I don't know if you've ever done this, but you could write something like this. Um, d squared dx squared plus d dx, okay? You put the y there, right? Now that would mean the same thing as, as this, right? It would mean, it doesn't mean add these two things and then multiply them by y, because these two things are not, they're not the same kind of thing that you would multiply by y. It means operate on y with these things. It means, okay, well, what are these things? These are derivative operators, so how do you use them? You differentiate y twice, and you add it to y differentiated once. Okay, so in the same way, we can now do the same thing with d's. So d squared plus d y, for example, means d squared y plus d y. d squared y means second derivative of y. d y means first derivative of y. Okay. So we do that. Fact tries out the y, so to speak, and now we have this. Now we replace all the d's. Because remember, the d's are not numbers, so this is not this is not a polynomial. It's not a pol it's not a real polynomial. These d's are not numbers; they're not variables. But now we replace the d's with lambdas. So we instead of writing down what we have, we have now write this. Okay. And now that's the, that thing with lambdas is the, is the auxiliary polynomial. Okay. And now we're gonna, of course, I'll give you the same thing as if you subbed in the e to the lambda x and factorized it out. It's doing basically the same thing, right? Factorizing out the function, really. Okay. So, let's do an example using the second method. So you have this equation, the same equation as before, right? y dash dash minus 3y dash plus 2y equals 0. So now I rewrite it with d's, okay? So there's maybe an intermediate step where you say, well, that's actually second derivative of y, so d squared y, minus 3 times first derivative of y, so dy, plus 2 times zeroth derivative, so there's no derivative, so just y equals 0. Okay. Now factorize out the y, so d squared minus 3d plus 2 times y, but it's not really times, it's operating on y equals 0. Okay. And now replace the d's with lambdas to get the auxiliary polynomial, which is, of course is the same as what we got before. Okay. Um, so now you have some remarks. Um, by the way, if you can, uh, uh, to be honest, I don't actually use either of these two methods. Um, I just look at that and go like, oh, lambda squared minus 3 lambda plus 2 lambda. Well, sorry, lambda squared minus 3 lambda plus 2. Okay, that's, that's fine. So then you need to not make a mistake I just made, which was second derivative, that would be a lambda squared. First derivative will be a lambda. Zeroth derivative will be like lambda to the zero, which is just one. Okay, so be careful. People often put a, la put a lambda in there, and you don't. You're not meant to put a lambda in there. Okay. The zeroth derivative, the function itself, does not correspond to lambda. It corresponds to a constant in the auxiliary polynomial. Okay. Okay. Some remarks. Any polynomial can be factored into a product of possibly re repeated linear and irreducible quadratic factors. Okay, so what this is, I mean, a nice way of saying this is, really, is any polynomial can be factored into a product of, of linear factors where the linear factors might include complex numbers. Okay. You take any polynomial. So a polynomial is something like lambda to the n minus, oh, sorry. Any polynomial, look like at the form lambda n plus... Oh, we can say actually a n lambda n uh, all the way to a 1 lambda plus a naught, right? You can always factorize that as these factors. Okay, this will have, this thing will have n factors. Ooh. Sorry. 
it'll have n factors because it's order n. Okay, so there'll be n factors. And you'll have the variable is lambda, so I'm going to put the lambdas there. And now these things will be the roots of the polynomial, right? Okay, can always be factored like that. But often those lambdas are complex numbers, not just real numbers. Okay, however, if they are complex numbers, remember that they then come in conjugate pairs, and then suppose that these two were two complex numbers. You could then times that out, and you would get, you know, you'd get a, something like, um, what would you get? You'd get, you'd get lambda 1, lambda 2, minus 2 lambda 1, plus lambda 2 times lambda, plus lambda squared. You get that, right? From those, those two factors will give you that. Okay, and now this would be, it turns out, because the lambda 1 and lambda 2 are, are conjugates of each other, complex conjugates, this and this both become real numbers. And so this is a, like a, just a normal real polynomial, but it's not factorizable over the reals. You, can't, you can only factorize it into complex factors, right? Not into, real fac not into just real factors of real numbers. So that's what they mean by irreducible quadratic factors. This is a quadratic because power, it's got a power of 2 as the highest power. Okay, but it's irreducible over the reals because it can't be factorized without using complex numbers. Okay, so any polynomial can be factored into a product of possibly repeated, of course, because the factors could be repeated. You could have the same factor more than once and irreducible quadratic factors, okay, which come from the complex factors. The multiplicity of a root is the number of times the corresponding factor is repeated. Okay, so for example, this polynomial, which has already been factorized for us, it's got three roots, four, minus three, and one, but the root four is repeated one, it's just one, one, there once, but the root minus three is repeated three times to the three, right? And root, the root one is repeated six times. So they've got a multiplicity of six. Okay. Our approach to solving these types of differential equations will be to factorize the auxiliary polynomial and sum the contributions from each of the linear and quadratic factors. Uh, I, again, I, re, I, know, I usually think of this rather as from each of the real and complex factors. The contributions from these factors is given by these facts below. Okay, let's do that in the next video.